Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. I usually don't like to rush to do a video, but I just wanted to show off the temperature. 105 degrees. I remember growing up in Nebraska, and you know, you have like, it'll be warm a couple times in the spring, but you will still get snow last week of April, first week of May sometimes. Uh, so anyway, um, before I start, like I said, I don't like to rush. Make sure I set up everything correctly. Rock and roll ninja. Yeah, this uh, backer tracker never quite works on this one. I think it's because I had one campaign that was for two floppies, and then I canceled it, and then I relaunched, uh, and I think that messed it up somehow. Not that anyone cares, just if you're curious. Um, <laughs> so uh, yesterday, I put up a uh, community post and uh, caught a lot of heat for it. So um, I want you to lean in closer to the speakers. Don't worry, I'm not gonna scream or do anything like that. I'm not gonna, I don't have like a vuvuzela. It's not gonna be any lame thing. I just, I want you to hear this. My job is not to tell you what you wanna hear. Other people will do that for various reasons. My job is to tell you what you don't wanna hear. When I started reviewing mostly mainstream comics in 2017, uh, there were a handful of people already out there on blogs and YouTube saying very, very similar things to what I was saying. Um, and then I said it, and uh, it was a huge problem with the mainstream industry. They didn't want to hear it. Uh, they got very, very angry uh, because I was doing basic stuff like saying like, Hey, you know, you keep saying this stuff is good, but I actually read it. Hey, you say, you say this sells well, but here's the Comicron. Like, what's going on? And they got really, really angry because what they wanted to be told is was not true. They wanted to be told, Miss Marvel is a huge hit. Captain Marvel is a huge hit. Picking random lesbians from community centers to write Marvel comics when they don't read Marvel comics is a sound financial decision and they got very 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 angry um uh and then eventually i stopped and i stopped because i stopped caring i no longer had any hope for the mainstream um as i've said before don't worry when i'm criticizing you that means i care worry when i've stopped because that means you know i don't care anymore most likely other people have stopped caring so uh, I did uh, a response um, to when I, after I saw a Twitter thread. And uh, one of the things that people get angry about is they will feel called out. A lot of these people, I know them. So if something only applied to one person, I wouldn't make a video about it. I wouldn't do a community post about it. I would just email them directly, which I've done many times in the past. If I do a video, if I do a community post, it's because it's a part of a larger conversation that I'm seeing multiple people doing it, and I'm seeing it becoming a trend. Um, if I don't care, I'll just not say anything. If I'm saying something, it's because I still care. So uh, I think, forget if this is a response. I think it was just a... Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is kind of a theoretical question, although I think it has been asked more you know, realistically. Uh, Doug, do you think it's appropriate to use timely delivery as a selling point? Creators can take it as a jab at them. Yes, I'm not taking it off the table. I pay artists on time. I take huge financial risks. We'll talk about that in a second. I won't mute myself when talking about sound business practices. So um, there's been a lot of talk lately about books being late or books being on time. And my issue with that is that... Um, I don't work in logistics and I'm not like a huge fan. <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not like, Ooh, DHL. They're really, you know, they're doing a lot better. Oh boy. Uh, no, like I read comics for fun, for the art, for the adventure. And so it's weird to me that basically every conversation right now is monopolized by is a book late. Yes or no. Um, I was collecting comics during the early nineties when late comics really became a thing. And it wasn't even discussed that much. And this would be, you know, like, hey, we're launching this huge thing. And then all the stores would 
pay millions of dollars and then it would come out six months later and people would be like, what the fuck? But luckily, you know, this, it was still popular and it was still wanted six months later. And there were opportunities for refunds, you know, they had different distributors. But I remember a time where lateness was a discussion. And even then, I don't remember it becoming, I mean, it's basically comics, I mean, YouTube, it's just all Amber Heard. And comics is just all lateness. And it's become this weird, grim task. Um, it's not funny. It's not fun. And let's just jump into it. Have There's a, a scene in Bugsy uh, where Bugsy is on, you know, it's what, the 1930s, 40s. He's going across America. I think it's the early 40s. And he's on a train. And he, he has a tryst with a woman. And she obviously has feelings when they get to Los Angeles. For him... It was just a time waster. It was just something to do. And she's, she, you know, she's spilling her emotions. And he says, you know, it was mostly the romance of the train. Well, I got to tell you, the romance of the train has nothing on the romance of the Amazon warehouse. Just look at it. Just look how exciting and fun. And look, can you imagine? My book could be here. And after this woman slowly goes around, hopefully she turns left, does a button hook, and then she picks up my book that you ordered. And then it gets put into this bin. A bin inside another bin. I guess it's more of a cage on wheels. And then it gets taken to this. Actually, I think this is intake. But it gets taken to something similar like this on the other side of the warehouse. And then it goes out. In... Isn't that exciting? <laughs> like, that's fun. That's, no, it's not. <laughs> there, uh, let's go back to, uh, okay, so I've got my Indiegogo campaigns. This is all of them. And then I've got uh, separated by late. Yellow means it hasn't gone out yet. Although it shouldn't be a problem for Mind Your Business and Grand Bazaar to be finished this month. Night Fan Blind Spot next month. Rock and Roll Ninja in June, and then start releasing the stuff that I've got squirreled away, like five books that are either going to be almost done or completely done. Two of them, one of, <laughs> one of which is Jawbreakers Forever, will be completely done when the campaign launches. Here's the problem. Okay, so let's go over here back to all. Uh, so far, I've sold, uh, or I've had 46,000, basically 47,000 orders, $2 million in sales. Um, and uh, I remember all of it. <laughs> this is, a, it's a business, but it's also very, you know, emotionally. Like, I, I create or co-create these books, and, and they mean a lot to me. So I remember every campaign. And you look at all these numbers for months late, going from zero I have one, two, three, four that were zero months late, one that was two months ahead of time. Mind your business has not gone out gone out yet, but it should uh, it, it should not be late. So it should go out on time. So if you're talking about on time or early, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then if you want to add in minimally late, one or two months, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Uh, so out of uh, 21 campaigns, 10 of them were uh, ahead of time, on time, or minimally late. One to two uh, months. Do you know which one probably had the best reaction out of all of them? I remember the reactions for all of them. I remember Lost Souls, people were excited, but everyone's like, oh, this uh, story... You know, you were talking a, a big game. You were criticizing all these comics, and then we don't think the story worked, and then it's like my number one book for reorders to this day. It's a good book. It's just the expectations were so damn high. Iron Sights, the expectations were low because people like, just didn't know. Like, what is this? It's like black and white. It's a shoot 'em up People absolutely loved Iron Sights. Iron Sights is maybe the second most beloved uh, book. Two months late. I got to tell you, the reaction for Expendables Go to Hell was insane. Um, uh, after, after The first two reviews online were negative. So I'm like, oh boy, 
here we go. And then everyone else loved it. Which is interesting because I love Expendables. It's basically the godfather to me. It's not meant to be. <laughs> You're not supposed to care about it that much. Like, I'm sitting there thinking, like, did Lee Christmas and Lacey, did they ever get back together? Did she get back together with her boyfriend from the first? Nobody cares. The people who make the movie don't care. I'm, like, the only person who cares about that stuff. So it's it's a franchise I would call, it, it's a popcorn franchise. It's meant when it comes out, maybe you see it on a Friday night with your friends. When it goes on to uh, streaming, you know, you watch it on a Saturday. Uh, I don't know a lot of people who have watched all three movies. It's like, hey, I saw the first one. That was really fun. And I think I saw the second one. Um, uh, normies tend to like the second one more because it got sillier and it had more, you know, guest stars. Uh, I liked the first one the most. But I was like, this is a franchise that it's, you know, it's, um, I wouldn't call it niche. My point is you're not supposed to be very emotionally invested in The Expendables. There's some emotional scenes, but they're, they're made to be light entertainment. So I was like, you know, a lot of these people, they'll even email. They're like, I saw one of the movies. I just like the art and the people on it. People love it. They love it. And it was 16 months late. Here's, here's the, the thing that I think people actually care about. <laughs> and uh, here is uh, Coffin Comics. Uh, this is their latest. <laughs> I love, I love these titles. So I've got this um, uh, spreadsheet where I track a lot of people who, um, I wouldn't say all of them are, like I always say, Iron Spike is actually the company that is the most similar to mine where it's all over the map. She does all kinds of different genres. She does stuff that she does. She publishes for other people. But honestly, I think her business and mine are very, very similar. So I got, you know, Shane Davis, Tim Lim, Sweet Cass, John Malin. And then I've got a bunch of categories for Brian Polito because originally this was just a Brian Polito uh, spreadsheet uh, because I find his business fascinating. Uh, for people who don't know, he started in comics in the 1990s. He had his own company, um, you know, there was a collapse, he sold off some characters, and then he made a comeback. And it was, I don't know how to get rid of this. I usually just put something here and then, how do you get rid of that like bounding box? Um, uh, so you see, this is uh, his company, it's all of his books. And you see, it's just this amazing rise. Now his main, uh, his main franchise, his Jawbreakers, is uh, Lady Death. And this dip is actually because uh, they did a crossover with a less popular character and gave her top billing. So if we just uh, delete that, you see it's just unfettered success and growth. Now I've ordered one or two of these over the years. And, you know, it's not really my thing. It's very professionally done. But I, what I remember about it is the amount of stretch goals. So just to reiterate for people who don't know, a stretch goal item is when you get more. More pages in the books, more, you know, extra items like stickers or bookmarks, what have you. But you don't pay more because the campaign is more successful when it hits a certain amount you will get a sticker, you will get a bookmark, you will get a poster, you will get an extra chapter in there. Um, an add-on is something you pay more for. Um, and what's happened is when you get this, you almost literally can't see the comic. There are so many stretch goal items in there. And he's very good at, I mean, he's it's a very professional uh, shop he runs. And uh, it, they, I'm just overloaded by their pages. I just order it and I get whatever I get because I can't make heads or tails of this. But there are a lot of different covers. There are a lot of stretch goals and there are a lot of add-ons. And that's what, you know, he advertises. While his stuff, I don't hear about his stuff being late. I also don't really hear about people talking about that issue. The main thing they talk about is all the extra stuff you're like because if i remember correctly the the comic although he's showing one that's square bound 
I ordered one of these. It was like $25. And if I remember correctly, it was like 50 pages and it might have even been stapled. But it just came up with so much stuff. And that's the thing that with the Expendables. Expendables came with so much stuff that I actually went through the expenses spreadsheet because I was like, how did I turn a profit on this? There is so much stuff. And I hand packed all of that stuff. It took me, you know, a couple hours a day for a month to pack it all because my fulfillment center wanted to charge me individually. And they would, they wanted to charge me like $31,000 because they were going to charge me like for each individual item, like a dollar 50 or something like that. So I did it myself and, you know, I paid myself, but a lot less than, you know, 31,000 saved money. But, um, the most excitement I ever saw was for a light entertainment franchise book that was 16 months late, but had a ton, like way more than any of my other campaigns. And it was a really good book. It just, it, it's, it's fun. It's mainstream. That's what people like. I get a lot of people purposefully or accidentally misconstruing what make the hot dogs means. I didn't pick that because I was like, wow, you get handed hot dogs really quickly. The whole point is it's a mainstream mass appeal product and you are not forced to have some sort of political litmus test or conversation. They don't ask you who you voted for. They just, they, they, they just make the hot dog. That's it. They make the hot dog. And, um, Locally here, uh, Amazon has gotten a lot. I mean, it used to, you, you would wait, I don't know, four to six days to get a delivery. And now I believe they opened another facility here nearby. And now you get stuff in one or two days. And I was speaking to a friend and I was like, am I nuts or did Amazon get less cool? He's like, yeah, it's really like you just get it the next day. It's nothing cool because, you know, I work from home. So I'm always ordering things. If it's not something that needs to be refrigerated, you know, or needs to arrive hot, you know, I, I order it, you know, through Amazon. And then every day or so, there's something on the uh, porch. Now, back in the day, since it would take, you know, almost a week, I would always forget what it was. So it was like a little uh, Christmas every day. Oh, what's this? Oh, Bermuda seeds uh, or Bermuda grass seeds. Cool. I, I kind of forgot I ordered that because it was almost a week ago. Now you order it, you get it the next day. You're like, oh, here's the Bermuda grass seeds. You want to know the campaign that had the least amount of excitement where people just seem kind of like confused and it was, is this you? Now there's two levels of excitement. There's the initial level that people uh, get where they say, uh, oh my gosh, I got it. This is so cool. And they send you a picture. Then there's the other uh, level where they actually read it. I'll go through this one in a second. And they go, oh man, you know, this one was my favorite. And they put this one there as a joke and they show their weapons because that's been a thing. The initial emails are always, hey, I got it. And I'm going to read it tonight. With Is This You... <sighs> I wouldn't say people were disappointed, you know, it was two months early, but it was like, it was the same feeling I get when I order Bermuda grass seeds from Amazon and they show up 28 hours later. It's like, oh, it's fucking fire weather. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, I'm going to go water the lawn after this. Um, yeah, like they weren't excited. They're just like, ah. I thought this was his other campaign. It, I already, I just ordered this like a month ago. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to be able to read it tonight. I got stuff to do. Like they almost seemed like bothered. And I got to tell you, fulfilling it. I know like on the surface, I'm supposed to be like, yeah, take that. Hey guys who deliver on time. Uh, why don't you try delivering ahead of time? Why don't you try it? It didn't feel like that. It felt like a grim task of me rushing to do something. And then as I was sending it off, I was like, feels like I should have added some more stuff in there. Instead of being two months ahead of time, have it on time, you know, print up some stickers, something, a bookmark, something, not just like rush it out there. So now let's get back to this. And again, 
I've had to deal with this multiple times in the last uh, week or so. Just because you're featured in a video or a community post doesn't mean I'm focusing on you. If I have your contact information and you're the only person doing this, I'll just email you directly. I had a person get angry and I wasn't even talking about them because I haven't looked at their channel in a year. And they're like, you know, why are you targeting me? And it's like, I literally have not even looked at your channel in a year. I didn't know you were coincidentally doing the things that other people were doing that I found annoying or I thought was leading down a path to, you know, um, cheap heat, as they say in uh, wrestling. So he says right here, and I believe he's expanded upon this in other places. I take huge financial risks. I'm actually doing that little like praying hands thing where you're like pausing. The whole point about crowdfunding is that you don't have to take huge financial risks. That you can put something out there. Now, yeah, you got to maybe front five pages. And a lot of people back in the day, they would talk to the artist. It's like, hey, can you do this for free? And then if it you know, doesn't hit the goal, then we just don't do it. Uh, you should pay the artist because they're spending, you know, eight hours, ten hours drawing that page. So, yeah, you do need to have some sort of art. You should have, I would say, at least three pages. You should either have three pages and a cover or uh, five pages of an interior consecutive so they can kind of see the story. But honestly, that's like a thousand dollars. And um, yeah, it does suck if you're the writer and you run the campaign. But that's one of the things that crowdfunding will let you do. It will let you do, like when we tried to launch um, Rock and Roll Ninja as two floppies, it wasn't popular. It would have paid for itself, but it wouldn't have had a profit. So we basically went back to the well and, they, and I said, let's just relaunch this as an entire graphic novel. Now I did a mistake where I didn't adjust the delivery date. I should have given Matt six more months. And I just gave the same delivery date for half the book as, you know, for the whole book. But it did a lot better. So you're getting these clues whether people like something or not. Now, I was seeing in the comments, and people were giving all these analogies, comparisons, and they were like, um, you were in the Marines, what would happen if you were late for formation? Is that what we want to make art? Like showing up to morning formation for PT? Well, uh, Jim Shooter did this and he made the trains run on time. Do we really, <laughs> do we really want to go down the rabbit hole of the, at least he made the trains run on time type of thing? And we'll talk about that in a second as well. The point about crowdfunding is it's not ordering something from an Amazon warehouse. You're helping to fund it. You're a patron of the arts. And this is, you know, goes back thousands of years because making art is very time consuming. In some cases, it can be expensive. The main expense is the person's time and their overhead. You know, they need a house, they need electricity, they need food. And a lot of this stuff can take a while. Um, so back in the day, they used to, you know, on their own dime or for free, produce a couple pages and they get money and say, OK, cool, thanks. This person has a day job. They can draw it at night. It's going to take them six months to 12 months to finish it. And then that's happened. Now, there have been some very, very, very late comic book crowdfunding. I was thinking <laughs> I was thinking that Rob was three and a half years late and he's closer to nine years late because this started brigade started as a Kickstarter. Um, and I did a bunch of uh, uh, polls a few months ago. People got angry about that. Um, and I was trying to gauge, like, because it used to be nobody would even notice something was late until it was a year late. You would see people in the comments on the page, hey, have you gotten it? I haven't gotten it. Okay, okay. Has anyone contacted them? When's the last update? Something's up. Um, now, I remember with Jawbreakers, literally like the first day, I had a uh, ne'er-do-well. Oh, you said this was uh, going to be due in September. It's September 1st. Where is it? It's like, bro, you know, first of all, technically, I have the entire month. Second of all, this isn't about the book. This is about you wanting to hurt me somehow. But I did a bunch of polls to, I was like, okay, so there's different expectations now. And what I basically found was that people wanted to get the book about three months afterwards. Three months was kind of the sweet spot. The campaign ends, they get it three months later. In that case, you do need most of the book done, or I would say certainly 75%. 
um, because it's going to take uh, about, you know, you get the print file and then you send it to the printers and sometimes they can print it in a couple days and sometimes they're like, hey, we're booked, we can do it in three weeks. And then it's got to go out to fulfillment or it's got to go back to you to get fulfilled. So if it's three months after the end, you got about two months, you know, to finish it up and edit and maybe make some changes if you want to. If we're going to set up the expectation that crowdfunding must now just simply be buying something from Amazon, you're killing what makes crowdfunding amazing. It's no longer about being a patron of the arts. It's no longer about helping to fund something to be created. Now, all you're doing is helping someone pay back a business loan they took out, which had added interest and then has the platform fees of Indiegogo or uh, what do you call it? Indiegogo or Kickstarter or any of the others. Um, I haven't looked into what the platform fees for Amazon, but I actually think they're uh, in some cases not on Comixology, but if it's a printed book that's just at their warehouse, I believe you can negotiate for better deals than the platform fees for Indiegogo and Kickstarter. But again, there's nothing romantic about this. Hey, would you like to buy a book that's already been printed and is on a shelf? It will eventually, uh, it arrived here and it went down here, th then this person, and they put it into this, this thing and then they put it on a shelf. And then when you ordered it, the whole thing went in reverse, except for to a different side of the, the warehouse. Yeah, that's fun, right? It's fun. So if crowdfunding is going to be effectively destroyed by turning it into just ordering off of Amazon, here's what you're going to lose. You're going to lose the indies. You're going to lose the you know people in their 20s who are just starting out. Who Do you remember being in your 20s? That $1,000 to pay someone to draw five pages, it might as well be a million. So you're going to lose all of the, you know, the creators, a lot in their 20s, even some in their 30s. You're going to lose people who don't have the money, who can't take out or can't qualify for a business loan. So all you're going to get is people who are already doing well or people who qualify for business loans. You're also going to lose out on all the weird, wonky, fun things that only exist because of crowdfunding. So what you're gonna see is my output reduced to only the mainstream popcorn stuff. So it's gonna be Jawbreakers, Expendables, things like that. Probably Iron Sights. It's not gonna be stuff like Rock and Roll Ninja. It's not gonna be stuff like Is This You or Mind Your Business. It's not gonna be Do As You're Told. It's going to be only mainstream normie stuff. And that is like a second. It's like crowdfunding was, you know, a town. And it went through an artillery barrage where they said, you know, okay, uh, you, you, you can't be crowdfunding. You can't, you just got to be Amazon. And then there's another one. It's like, by the way, the only stuff that's really going to be viable is mainstream normie popcorn stuff. That's all, all the weird indie stuff, it's, it's not going to make it. It's not going to meet, you know, the new requirements. Um, and so uh, the crowdfunding space, as they call it, it's going to become a lot less interesting. Now, um, uh, <laughs> somebody brought up Jim Shooter, who I'm a huge fan of. And they're like, you know, Jim Shooter, he came in and he uh, cracked the whip and he got the trains running on time. It's like, oh, we need different... Phrase is, <laughs> basically, he took a bunch of disorganized hippies and he gave them regular business expectations and that the monthly books need to come out monthly. And so one of the things that already existed but became much more common during Jim Shooter's run, which was a good run, real good run, is the fill-in issue, sometimes called the inventory issue. The fill-in issue is the idea that you have something, it's usually not written or drawn by the regular team. It's been an inventory waiting for someone to get sick, to have a case of the Mondays, whatever, to all of a sudden become addicted to video games like Joe Maguire did in the 1990s. Something happens and you can't get the monthly book out. So you end up getting some complete nothing burger 
of a fill-in issue of Spectacular Spider-Man drawn by Keith Pollard. You know what I mean? And if you go back and you try to be completist of Marvel runs specifically, I saw this a lot less at DC. It was Marvel, especially in the 80s. It was a freaking epidemic. It is almost impossible to find that 12 issues in a row that's done by the same team. So instead of, you know, just, you know, have, missing it or having a bubble or having one be a little late, they end up having these worthless feeling. I mean, there were, there's a couple that are good, but most of those things were just dog shit. And so now we're getting to all these analogies, speedy delivery, cracking the whip, the trains run on time, morning formation. That's not what makes crowdfunding cool. I also got some, I don't know, like I said, anytime you're, you're not uh, doing as you're told and you're not telling people what they want to hear, you're going to get pushback, you're going to get anger. And I got some responses like, oh, so is being fast bad? Oh, you don't want fast books? Don't you want fast service? Have you ever been to a sit-down restaurant? Not fast food. You go out to whatever, Longhorn Steakhouse. What do you do? There's an expectation. You're going to sit down. Waiter's going to show up a couple minutes later. Sometimes they say, are you ready? You're ready or you're not ready? If you're not ready, they'll come back in five minutes. You order. Usually you're going to get to drink very quickly, one or two minutes. Five minutes later, a salad, maybe some bread, or maybe the bread first. You get your actual entree, your, ma your meal, 20, 30 minutes later. This has happened to me a few times. Have you ever gone there and it's like a busy night? So they're doing that math. They're like, okay, we know uh, whatever. They don't have Malibu chicken there. That's that uh, sizzler. Okay, let's change it to a sizzler. Okay, uh, all right. So we know, uh, you know, law of averages. We sell 20 Malibu chickens every hour between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Fridays. So they just have them ready. And you ever just sit down and like your food is like, here's your entire meal. You're like, I just got here. I'm talking to someone. There's a whole rhythm here. I actually do believe there's a sweet spot, and it's not about getting stuff ahead. I think there is a point where anticipation is part of crowdfunding, and you will actually get a better result. Not being late, but the idea that these things have to ship weeks or months, singular, after the end of a campaign or you know one or two, I don't think so. Because like I said, I've had 21 campaigns, of which I've fulfilled 17 so far. Two more should go out, you know, in the next 30 days. The most excitement I've ever seen was from a book that was 16 months late. The least? And once people read Is This You, they liked it. They liked it a lot. Usually people don't read stuff the same day they get it. They'll get it on a Tuesday, Wednesday. They'll read it on the weekend. Um... It's actually always very suspicious when someone says they read it like the first day. I remember specifically back with like the first uh, Jawbreakers, there was all these people who just had it in for me. They're like, I got this book and I opened it up and I read it. They will literally say they read it in the mailbox. Worst comic ever. Threw it in the trash. It's like, no, we didn't. <laughs> nobody, nobody believes that stupid ass story. Somebody was sending me a picture. It was uh, Alex DeCampi. Like, uh, here I am eating my breakfast and doing my morning reading. And it was two 100-page graphic novels. You weren't reading that stuff. You were showing off that you read it because you're from an unfashionable group, straight, white, and cis. And the two writers that wrote those two books were not straight, were not white. One of them was cis. Um, or no, I think one of them was straight, but pretends not to be. Anyway, um, a normal thing is to get it and read it, you know, a couple days later. When people actually read Is This You, they liked it a lot. They liked Narzak books. That's a popular, you know, uh, line. But the least amount of excitement I've ever gotten when people initially got their books was when I was two months ahead of time. Um, crowdfunding is not ordering from Amazon. You're a patron of the arts. You know, you go back to all the classic, you know, uh, Italian masters. They all had patrons. Some rich guy who would say, hey, we can't have you working out in the fields and painting at night. I'm going to pay for you to have a villa, you know, and somebody to bring you food. 
and you're just going to get better at that thing that you're really good at. Um, so crowdfunding is not speedy delivery. It's not morning formation. It's not cracking a whip. It's not me ordering a pizza and getting it in 30 minutes where it's free. You're helping to fund the creation of something that's thing is going to take time. And from having experience at 21 campaigns, 17 of which are fulfilled, most excitement I ever saw was from the one that at the time was the most late. The least excitement I ever saw was from the one that was two months early. Um, and then probably uh, second is this one that was actually two months late. It was, uh, yeah, so Iron Sights, uh, oh, p oh, and people love do as you're told. Three months late. So uh, I don't think there should be expectations of people being uh, done or almost done or all the way, you gotta be all the way done and it's gotta shit. No, if you do that, you're gonna eliminate, you know, everyone making less than average, you know, salary. You're gonna lose all those entry level people that crowdfunding is literally made for. And you're gonna lose the, you know, the happy little accidents as uh, Bob Ross said. If all of a sudden these expectations, now I'm lucky because I had a good head of steam, I had good investments, I didn't take out business loans, I did a margin loan. Um, and I got five books ahead. So my stuff is going to start, you know, really getting out there. It's not going to be 16 to 18 months late. It's not going to be late, but it's not going to deliver two weeks after the end of the campaign. Probably said, like I said, I did a bunch of polls. Three months seems to be the sweet spot. You know, it's just like I used to order from Amazon. When I would get it in four to six days, it was cool. When I get it in 30 hours, it's like, okay, it's, I know exactly what this is. It's the pill splitter. You know, I ordered... 28 hours ago. It's not interesting. Crowdfunding is a really, really special thing. Oh, and then I also got the, you know, oh, you're only saying this because you have books that are late. No. Okay. I'm not a super villain. <laughs> like, it's like, ooh, my books are late. I'm going to say late is great. No. I've fulfilled 17 books. I have ordered dozens, and I'm using all of these you know, uh, reactions I've had to real life ordering stuff. And I've done polls. Late is not great, but um, turning crowdfunding into just ordering a book off of Amazon, making it as identical as possible, kills what makes crowdfunding great. Late is not great, but crowdfunding, as it existed for the first 10 years, is great. It's about patronage of the arts, and it's about helping to create something. It's not about, it's not about this. This is not crowdfunding. It's not funny, it's not fun. Anyway, it's very warm in here. <laughs> Thanks for watching.